Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Creative Mornings Winnipeg. We're so happy that you're joining us. This is our third official event. I know that you may have met some folks at your table already this morning, so uh, maybe shared a little bit of uh, your coffee, what's in your cup this morning. We encourage you to say hi in the chat. We really want to engage with you in there. So let us know that you're here. Let us know what organization that you represent because we want to say hello back to you. I want to recognize that we are on Treaty 1 territory, homeland to the Ojibwe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene Nations, homeland to the Red River Métis. I would like to make sure that you're very aware that the Creative Mornings event is recorded by video and photography and will be used on our social media and our websites. So by attending the event, you agree to have your picture in your chats uh, or your uh, the comments that are recorded in the chat recorded for uh, for that purpose. We often have guests who may not be from Winnipeg, so we send a welcome to those from our global Creative Mornings community. We're excited that you decided to wake up and be awesome with us today. We are so happy that you plan to, to join us and spend this morning with us. Um, every month we have a monthly theme and this month we invite you to contemplate the theme of Ripple. You'll hear a little bit later from our speakers who are James Murphy and Ramir Diaz who have a great presentation for you. Our hashtags for today event are hashtag CM Winnipeg and hashtag CM Ripple. So as you're sharing any screenshots or images uh, with your phone, please make sure that you tag us. My name is Jessica Dumas and I'm a professional speaker coach. I'm a member of the Creative Mornings Winnipeg Kitty and I'm a partner at Creative Mornings Winnipeg as well. Some of you may know me as the past chair to the Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce or the Aboriginal Chamber of Commerce or maybe you follow me and we get to talk about speaking things on Instagram. So um, join me there if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that. And also thank you for joining us on AirMeet. I know another platform, there's so many platforms that uh, we're getting used to, but you're probably not surprised anymore. You may have noticed that when you entered, you landed in a social lounge, and this is a place that you can hang out, go in and out of virtual tables, and get to meet people in our community. Every creative morning, we also have a musical guest, and today we're going to head back to the social lounge so that you have an opportunity to connect with others who are here today, and then we're going to invite you to come back again where and when we will hear from our speakers. When the main presentation is done, such as right now, your sound in your video are automatically turned off, so just so you know. And if you have any questions about AirMeet, there is a purple question mark at the bottom of your screen, and that's where you can ask for help if you have any questions about using the platform. And also, in advance for next month, because we have this event every single month, our theme for April is procrastinate, but we're not going to procrastinate on inviting you. We encourage you to not pro procrastinate in registering because you can do that now. For April, we are welcoming Indigenous designer Sean Vincent of Vincent Design, who is also here today. So say hello when you get a chance. And um, he's gonna be talking about the theme procrastinate. Um, so the tickets are available already, so we invite you to register today. One of the things that we say in the First Nation community all the time is we talk about our cousins. So we're going to invite you to invite your friends and then invite your cousins because we want them here to join us also. And it's very important for us to acknowledge our global and our local partners, so I'd like to do that now. Creative Mornings has three global partners, so thank you to MailChimp. MailChimp has supported Creative Mornings for over 11 years now. And thank you to Basecamp and Hey. I'd also like to say thank you to Skillshare, who's the newest global partner of Creative Mornings Global. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step on their creative journey. And we're also very thankful for all of our local partners. This is what 
allows the the event to, to feel like home is our local partner. So we want to welcome um, a new partner to the Creative Mornings Winnipeg family, which is Squarely Social. So welcome, Squarely Social. They've come on board to help our videography for the events, and we're so grateful to have their support. So um, welcome and thank you to them, and uh, give them some love in the chat because we're so happy to have them with us. We're also grateful for the support of Red River College and their American language class for providing interpretation for our creative morning events. You'll see interpreters, the video box is pinned to the main viewing option. And today our, our interpreter, we're starting with Nikki. So welcome Nikki, we're so happy to have you. Excellent, so thank you for all of our partners. Every month we spotlight the creativity of our local musicians as well. And today we have a special presentation for you, a morning musical performance by Manitoba band Slow Spirit. Slow Spirit was formed in 2013 and consists of Natalie Bourne, Eric Roberts and Justin Alcock. Their most recent album was released in May 2020 under the name Nowhere No One Knows Where to Find You. So please join me in welcoming Slow Spirit and their song Star Stuff. And we hope that you enjoy this music this morning. Just feel the music in your body and, uh, and just enjoy. So here is Slow Spirit. Yay. 
What a wonderful day to, wonderful way to start the day. So I saw that comment in there as well. And I agree, like that's just the kind of song that you want to listen to when you're just enjoying your coffee. So, so that was great. Um, we'll, we will hear from Slow Spirit again at the end of our event. So make sure to stay for that. March's global theme is Ripple. And we know that even the smallest action can have a huge impact. Today, we're inviting you to share your stories about a ripple effect that maybe you experienced. So has someone, someone else's action had a positive impact on you, even if they didn't know it? So what was that ripple effect? Or have you had a positive impact on someone else that came as a ripple effect, even if you didn't know the time? Anyway, when you hear Ripple, what comes to mind? So to share these stories, we are going to uh, invite you back to the so social lounge for about 10 minutes. And if you're not a morning person like some of us and you're not totally stoked about the idea of talking to strangers in the morning, we invite you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit because when you engage in this type of event, type of conversation. This is where you get to have a positive impact on others. And we believe that everyone has a very valuable and important story to share. So we invite you to lean in and make that connection and be part of the ripple that will come out of this event because you never know what type of impact that you will have on someone their day or their life. So in the social lounge, feel free to find a seat, take a seat at any table by clicking take a seat and turn on camera and your mic. Otherwise you'll do what I did this morning where I'm talking to myself. And, um, and that way you'll be able to see and hear people at your table and we'll give you a two minute warning when we're gonna call you back in. So, uh, and then at that time we will hear from our speaker. So go and tell your stories, reflect on Ripple and what does that mean to you? So see you in 10 minutes. Welcome back. I hope that you had some good conversations about Ripple and heard some amazing stories about Ripple. I was remembering that I had a memory or a, a, I woke up, I had a dream and it had something to do with Ripple, but it hasn't all come back to me. So I'm waiting I'm waiting for that, that memory of that dream that I had last night about well, what was that? Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that. I really like this topic. I think it's really cool to reflect on that. So I would really love to hear everyone's favorite stories. So feel free to put whatever you like in the chat so that I can catch up. Um, I am very pleased to introduce to you John Nuez from New Media Manitoba. John is our technology guru behind producing Creative Mornings Winnipeg on Airmate. He takes care of all of that magic and we're so thankful that he does. And today he's going to join us in front of the camera and he's going to read our Creative Mornings manifesto and introduce our speakers. So welcome to the front, John. Hi guys, happy Friday to you all. Uh, hope you guys have a good morning so far. I'm just gonna get set up here really quick. Alrighty, good morning everyone. So, Creative Mornings chapters around the world celebrate creative talent, but also promote an open space to connect with like-minded people. Creative Mornings has got a powerful manifesto, which we read every event. And here's the manifesto. So everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, uh, in learning from others, in jazz hands, virtual claps, and virtual snaps. I can't snap though, but I try. Uh, we bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose. 
confident that will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. So the Winter Picture has also made a commitment to reflect diversity and ensure inclusion for our events. Located in one of the most diverse communities in North America, we are as inclusive as we are creative. And we will be creative in order to achieve inclusion. We believe in the value of diversity of perspectives, audiences and industries as we create safe events to debate and discuss what it means to be creative. We will see multiple approaches and points of view, and we will be mindful and purposeful in building a culture where these differences are not valued, but not only valued, but celebrated. So whenever I think of Ripple, I think of the effects my actions can have. You know, I grew up learning that a simple smile can go a long way, and uh, it might have a chance to brighten someone's day. I didn't mean that to rhyme, it, it did, so that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, no matter how big or small your actions are, uh, it can impact others in ways you won't even know. And this could even lead them to impact others, and so on. I had the pleasure to work with James and Amir speakers, alongside their colleague Jennifer Daniels and the Manitoba Construction Sector Council, as we traveled across uh, different communities across the province, to create the awareness for students of future careers. We were able to see this hand uh, how excited students were when they had the chance to use a really cool tech like virtual reality uh, in their communities, hoping that it would spark some interest in the future. James and Amir have been doing an amazing job uh, at career awareness throughout Manitoba, presenting and speaking to students uh, across the city and across the province. So please join me in welcoming James Ramir to the Creative Morning Stage. Hi, James. Hi, James. Good morning. Good morning, John. Very nice. Very nice intro. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, we just wanted to uh, to introduce ourselves. My name is Ramir Diaz, and I'm the coordinator education and training for the Manitoba Construction Sector Council. I am also a licensed uh, journey person electrician. Um, I'm actually going to share a brief story of how I got to where I am today. Um, just letting you know that uh, getting to this point uh, where I was not a straight shot destination by any means. And I'm James Murphy. I am uh, nine, October 3rd at 9. And I like to tie in the ripple effect that the civil rights had on my life and uh, how we uh, connected with uh, my day to day job uh, every day. So I'm looking at, I'm very excited about being here this morning. And uh, thank you. I just want to thank everybody there at the Creative Morning for giving us this opportunity to share what we do at the Manitoba Construction Sector Council. Can everybody hear us okay? Okay, so um, to start off, uh, my parents were minimalistic. Uh, okay, so, yeah, my parents were minimalistic when they immigrated to Winnipeg inspired by immigrants to begin a new chapter in their life in the country. I was born in Winnipeg, and I have lived in Winnipeg my entire life. Growing up, I saw the perseverance and dedication uh, my parents had, which has inspired me to continue to achieve all of my goals. My parents, however, had a different vision in mind and what's, to what success is. In my parents' eyes, success to their offspring was to become a lawyer, a doctor, or a judge. I did the best I could to follow in my parents' footsteps to achieve all my goals and their goal I had in mind. There came a time when I knew it was time for me to discover the wealth of career opportunities uh, on my own. Little did I know I was causing a ripple effect of my own. 
my parents were willing to support me financially as well as to pursue their aspirations. I knew in myself that this was not what I was destined to be. However, my parents were distraught and allowed me to venture on. As a child growing up, I had the knack to dismantle anything I my hands on, you name it, calculators, watches, toys, remotes, and anything that required batteries. This was the best technology that the 80s had back in the day. The best, the best part was, I was able to pull that stuff together without my parents even knowing, because I knew if my parents ever caught me, that would be the end of me. I continued my journey in life to seek what would be the most suitable and rewarding career path to get into. I tried everything from providing computer technical support over the phone, to working in retail, to selling furniture, to delivering the newspaper, working for the airlines, and even went as far as selling vehicles. I cherished every opportunity I got to gain as much essential skills and work experience. My parents were anxiously in the back waiting for me to give up to eventually become that doctor or lawyer or judge they have always wanted me to be. Although Dr. Jeff does have that nice ring to it, I still yearn to discover what profession would interest me the most. Through tremendous support from peers, mentors, and especially my wife, I was able to become an accomplished skilled trades professional. Even before uh, taking electrical training and schooling, I was confident in my skills with troubleshooting uh, home electrical deficiencies, despite my parents not acknowledging the value of a profession in the skilled trades. The real effect of this has motivated me to continue learning and advancing despite my obstacles ahead of my way. Even being one of the few minorities in my skilled trade during school, I continue to excel because I knew that uh, if I can do it, so can, if someone else can do it, so can I. And if I can do it, and everyone else out there can do it as well. So presently, part of my duties with the Manitoba Construction Sector Council is to promote the broad range of career opportunities attained within the construction industry, primarily to newcomers, to immigrants, minorities, youth, indi in indigenous individuals, and females in Manitoba. Most students James and I present to do not understand the ripple effect of getting up in the morning and going to school and the value of education, whether that be in the city public schools of Winnipeg or in our provincial northern communities. <clears throat> I am a former three breakup champion and CFL Hall of Famer with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the Canadian Football League. In 1977, I earned a four-year scholarship to Utah State University. <clears throat> After my four years was up, I was drafted to the Minnesota Vikings in the National Football League. I was born and raised in the, in the deep southern parts of the United States. As a black American kid growing up in a small segregated town in Florida, I was young to understand the civil rights movement and the rebel effect that it would have on me in regards to my education and the equal opportunity as laid out by the United States of America Bill of Rights. As a matter of fact, it never really crossed my mind about the ripple effect of this movement because I was just too young to fully understand the impact of this mass protest of people fighting for equal rights so one day I could fulfill my dream. In my mind, I was like most red-blooded American boys growing up in my neighborhood. I wanted to play professional football in the National Football League. However, to get there, to get to the National Football League would require a whole lot of ripple effects that I had no idea about or what it would take to get there. The long-term ripple effect of, of this civil rights and mass protest movement was just the beginning for changes and funding for better schools, black people being able to eat in restaurants, sitting anywhere on a bus, or voting for local politicians that would speak on our behalf in the House of Representatives or Congress 
or as president of the United States. This movement gave energy to a revolution that gave many young black boys and girls like me an opportunity to chase our dreams. The rubble and those outdated laws were slow and came with bloodshed and lives lost. Even to this day, there's still hardships and roadblocks, but it opened the door for a whole new beginning to a new segment of people that only knew hardship and discrimination. After my professional football career was over, I started a small retail business at the Force Market. It filled the void for a while, but after a while, I wanted to do something else. 15 years ago, an opportunity came for me to work as a program coordinator with the Manitoba Home Builders Association. But for the last 11 years, I've been working with the Manitoba Construction Sector Council, the MCSC, as a program coordinator and as a community and youth liaison. Part of my job is, is to promote the construction trades and opportunities to youth in schools and in the communities. So, who is the Manitoba Construction Secretary and what do we do? We have a short three minute video to, to uh, talk about and show who we are and what we do. Canada, in order to fill the gap left by workforce retirement from now until 2024, Manitoba needs to attract about 11,800 new construction workers. This goal will require careful planning and foresight. The Manitoba Construction Sector Council's purpose is to work with leaders in the construction industry to make sure we always have a motivated, skilled, and educated group of people to keep Manitoba's construction industry growing. As a result, MCSC's primary goals are to upgrade the industry's existing skills and promote the benefits of working in the construction sector to youth and individuals from underrepresented groups. In order to accomplish these goals, MCSC focuses its energies within three key areas. Indigenous engagement, community and youth outreach, development and delivery of patient programs. The Indigenous Engagement Program offers training and guidance for members of any Indigenous community or organization who are interested in pursuing a future in construction. Our Indigenous liaison, Ron Castell, travels all over Manitoba delivering career and presentations, sharing construction videos, and using hands-on activities such as the crane simulator to demonstrate what a life in construction can offer people in Indigenous communities. MCSC's groundbreaking mentorship programs allow industry to work with and construction companies on large local economic development projects. This partnership enables the local workforce to gain valuable construction experience while providing sustainable economic growth to their communities. Through these programs, the MCSC is ensuring that everyone in Manitoba has the opportunity to enter the construction sector in a culturally aware environment. MCSC also creates opportunities for youth to learn about construction trades through classroom presentations. The goal is to recruit young into the trades from plumbers, carpenters, and electricians to heavy equipment operators. The interactive game, First Day of Work, engages students as they learn about different jobs on a construction site. Partnering with schools ensures that MCSC is getting young people and educators moving with the momentum of the industry. MCSC is removing the negative perception of construction and shining a light on what it really is, a rewarding and lucrative life. The previous Indigenous liaison, Ron Castell, has moved on and is working up north for Kiosk uh, and Manitoba Hydro. William Curtis is our current Indigenous li liaison. Jennifer Daniels is our Northern Program Coordinator. My co-host here today, Ramirez, uh, replaced with Donna Obengani Jackson as our coordinator of education and training. There's also Alice, our finance, finance manager, Carla, our uh, office manager, and Carol Paul, our executive director. Different faces, however, Manitoba Construction Sector Council mandates remain the same, building partnerships and making connections in the community. 
For our ripple effect theme today, James and I would like to bring awareness to our audience of some of the conditions happening right now in northern communities. Then present some of the solutions MCSC has provided and is currently providing. So now let's look at some of these inequalities and barriers that, that exist. Uh, for instance, uh, location of work. Work can be uh, at, in, a, in accessible places, moving from job site to job site. Public transportation is not always available, or if you don't have a vehicle, you know, it's tough to get uh, to, to work and home. A uh, lack of financial resources. Some families uh, live on less than $250 a month. You know, surviving is more important than an education, which means youth, youth must work instead of going to school, even if that means working for less than minimum wage. And family commitments like uh, daycare or home daycare. One of the greater issues is that if, uh, if you are living in a single parent home or if you have younger siblings, first priority or responsibility is to look after uh, siblings, younger brothers or sisters, while parents go to work. Some other uh, <clears throat> liabilities or barriers, I should say, are the ability of training, the availability of training or lack thereof. Most small or remote communities do not have high schools or colleges or universities, and it's very hard to get training in the smaller remote communities. There's also no re recreation facilities. Most remote communities do not have any recreation facilities. If students are lucky enough to have a school, but do not have a place to go play and burn off energy, they usually go home after school and sleep, and then get up the next day and do it all over again no emotional outlet, and no essential skills learned. Also, the lack of communication, uh, meaning no internet access beyond the community. So to aid uh, with addressing issues in northern communities, the Manitoba Construction Sector Council has collaborated with Barrett River and Human Mineral Construction in a joint venture partnership. So we want to share a short video clip of the progress that has been done in the past. We partnered with the Manitoba Construction Sector Council to do a membership program and a job readiness to address some of the issues that we've had in the past of working with this nation. So, the element that is missing. Success was absolutely fabulous. No, I don't have to have a lock shot. I don't have to have a loader, a dozer, a grader. It's fun. I wanted to take, really take advantage of our equipment and being able to train our people to do the work to get in our contract. Somebody would have equipment, they could have people, but if you don't have the experience and a mentor to teach you, to me that was a recipe for failure. We were lacking the Virginia Hub professionals, so we turned to a joint venture partner. My approach to joint ventures is that what we feel is it is their land, they should be accommodated, and what better than to um, partner up with a membership company like ourselves. I think it was a win win for all. Other ways Manitoba Construction Sector Council is working to address the issues is with a project called Try a Trade. Try a Trade is an opportunity for youth to experience firsthand some of the many careers related in construction using virtual and augmented reality. MCSC has brought this Try a Trade project to over 3,500 youth in and around Winnipeg each year. Remote Indigenous communities have not had access to this opportunity. So MCSC proposed to partner with Sierra School Division, Manitoba First Nation Education Resource Center, and independent indig Indigenous schools to bring career awareness using technology to over 40 Indigenous communities within Manitoba in, in 2019. In 2020, $100,000 of industry funding was leveraged from, from Manitoba Preventive Contributions 
the 47 indigenous communities. Over a one year period, nearly 3,000 students living in remote indigenous communities participated in this Try a Trade North project. To bring this experience to life for students, MCSC developed 14 360 degree virtual reality trace presentations to students, teachers, parents, and counselors. This allowed students to virtually connect to trades people and industry experts to engage in discussion about careers in construction. The initiative, this initiative placed new entrants virtually in the role of a construction worker and allowed them to hear firsthand from Manitoba tradespeople who work in the heavy commercial and home building industries. Instructors and counselors were even given a USB flash drive with all the resources, including course outlines and career resources. Workshops were held with instructors and counselors to orient them on the use of technology in their classroom. So, why is this important? By using the VR headsets and learning tools, participants will see construction as a career opportunity. When they construction sites in their community, hopefully this will open, open lines of communication about the different construction work that's going on in their community. When Jennifer Daniels, the program coordinator for trial trades, was asked how will this experience change the way students think about construction, she replied, the students now know there is high need for construction trades and will share their experience at home with family members. And this will lead to more inspirational talk about their future. The ripple effect of this technology in construction may not ever be known with some of these young indigenous minds. However, by bringing this technology into these northern Manitoba communities, it may help trigger their thought process and expand their vision and dreams, and perhaps some may realize the awesome possibilities right there in their own community. Another avenue that MCSE is supporting the Northern communities is by delivering a framers course, which allows students living in the communities to earn a framing certificate. Students learn to frame and build a home which is also constructed by an Indigenous instructor. When students complete the course, they have the necessary skills to secure employment. Also, these skills can be applied for the best of their own personal lives as well uh, within their community. There's a full video of our construction uh, employment preparation program framework course that students from the Interlake uh, community were involved in. That video will be shared at the end of the presentation. MCSC is filling a gap with so many different types of job readiness and certified training, as well as, as exposure to immersive technologies. The future of these urban communities depends on organizations like MCSC and others that has the ability to impact and influence young minds to pursue technologies in the trades. Like the hands-on summit app he has got to experience in partnership with MCSC and several school divisions. There's a two and a half minute video available of the welding and summer camp that we did last summer, and that link will be shared at the end of this presentation as well. In conclusion, Manitoba Construction Sector Council's main objective for de developing this technology is to help create awareness of the opportunities in this multi-billion dollar industry and offering it in a safe environment in the hope that the participants gain greater insights into their minds, which we hope will lead to a ripple effect of wisdom, confidence, and happiness with oneself. The ripple effect of the civil rights movement triggered a powerful country to realize it could be more powerful and united if there were equal rights for all of its citizens. It gave me and people that look like me an opportunity to not only dream, but to fulfill our dreams. 
LCSC has continued to thrive and grow during the pandemic. And it, it is because of the leadership and team effort, great partnership, and the desire to build connections in the community. And it starts at the top. And for MCSC, it starts with our board of directors, Colleen Monroe, and our executive director, Carol Paul. In an industry that is dominated by males, these two have provided leadership that is equal or better to anyone, anytime, and anywhere. Their work and contribution has been outstanding to the growth and success of this organization and to the success of building a more skilled and inviting workforce. It, this in itself has caused a ripple effect which has encouraged more young women and girls to pursue a career in the construction trade. And with that, I will turn it over to my co-worker, Ramir, to conclude our presentation. Okay, so technology over the years has produced many ripple effects on everyone's lives and in the construction industry. Whether it be toys or tools, it has improved a lot of many. In construction, the advancements of technology has proven to allow for improved communication, taller buildings, safer and more efficient work sites. It is nice to know that this type of technology is being shared and embedded into the Northern communities for generations to come. My journey towards the construction industry was full of ups and downs, twists and turns. It was not a straightforward path. Through exploration and the guidance of others, their effects were able to steer me in the right direction. Today, James and I have the honor to initiate a ripple effect in the choice of the next generation's career path towards the construction industry. We may never know the full impacts that Manitoba Construction Sector Council has had on the lives of our Northern communities, but we strongly believe even if we influence one individual's life, we could only imagine the ripple effects this will cause. Going back to my parents, they finally accepted that uh, becoming an electrician or a skilled trades professional is not so bad after all. I have done quite a few electrical upgrades in their home and the phone calls for more upgrades never stop. Jane and I would like to thank everyone for attending um, our Creative Mornings Ripple Effect presentation. We also like to thank all the committee members of Creative Mornings for inviting us to share our take on the Ripple Effect and providing us with the necessary guidance leading up to this presentation. The MCSC will continue letting it rip in Manitoba. Let it rip. Hey guys, just waiting for my camera to come on. Thank you. That was beautiful. That was an excellent presentation. Thank you so much for sharing your personal stories and your experiences and how you felt the ripple effect and kept it going. Great job. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. Thank guys. you. Thank you for having us, Jessica. Absolutely. You are awesome host as well. Thanks for hosting. Thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. much. That was You're very, welcome. very heartwarming. That'll keep us going. That will keep us going. So excellent. Um, thanks so much, John, for doing the intro and welcoming both of them here today. I want to acknowledge that creating a ripple starts with small changes that make big waves, just like we heard in their story this morning. In construction, that means getting students to be curious about a career in construction and changing the stigma associated with the industry and foregoing um, new ways forward through partnerships with government, industry, educators, and mentors. So that was excellent. So get inspired to start your own ripple and waves by tuning in with what drives you. Focus on how you interact with people and uh, how you interact with everything around you changing your way forward. So now talking about that ripple effect, uh, would you be interested in starting your own ripple effect by pitching your project, a job alert or your work for hire for the next Creative Mornings event? 
because we have a special opportunity for you. We're inviting our community members to participate in this creative morning event to pitch themselves in a project or idea, and we're only giving you 30 seconds to do it. So we invite you to submit a 30 second video to our email at winnipeg at creativemornings.com and we will pick two or three to play at our next event in April. So what do you have to lose? So check that out because we're really excited to, to share that. I want to say thank you very much to everyone for joining us at Creative Mornings. We look forward to seeing you in April and we will uh, welcome our Indigenous designer, Sean Vincent for next month from Vincent Designs and he's gonna talk about procrastinate. So thanks for um, the, the, those of you who have already registered for next month. Um, it's available now for you to register for next month. Don't forget to add us to your social media accounts. Follow us wherever you are so that we can find you and connect with you there. And uh, we want to, before we close, share another song by Slow Spirit. This one is called To Be Together. So take a few moments to listen and reflect and just engage on that and um, understand the ripples that you are creating in the world. So the formal program is done, um, but please feel free to head back to the social lounge after the music, hang out and chat with folks from today's event for a little bit longer, and, um, and just enjoy your, your networking with everyone, and enjoy your Friday, enjoy your weekend. Register for next month, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day. Going slowly, think mostly in lazy winding circles. My body is an island softly drifting into the blue. What does it all mean to you? Lay down beside me and tell the truth. Burn me in the silence, breathing beautiful absolute. What do we know about right and wrong? What do we know about the ways of the weather? I don't know much about where I belong, but I know it feels good to be together. What do we know about right and wrong? What do we about the ways of the weather. I don't know much about where I belong, but I know it feels good to be together, good to be together, good to be together, good to be together. Good to be together. Good to be together. Good to be together.